Hello, hello everyone. My name is Anne. We are in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and you are watching Art on the Creek. I've just received the March 2024 sketch box, and I thought it would be a good time to do a little review. Here is how they always come packaged with this tissue paper in it, which you can definitely reuse. And let's see what else is in the box here. They usually give you a sticker and some uh, really cool art supplies. So here's the sticker. Let's see if I can get it on one of my journals. That's kind of where I collect them. I cannot lie, this sticker gave me a bit of trouble, <laughs> but I blame it on my hands. I do have some arthritis in my hands, and today, for some reason, the grip just isn't working. So let's find a good place for this little guy. I think these little boxes with feet are so cute. I like this trend that they're doing here. So there's where I collect my stickers. For those of you who may not know, Sketchbox is a monthly art subscription kit. I'm sure you've seen them on Instagram. They've been around for quite some time. Even though I'm an affiliate with Sketchbox, I did pay for this subscription with my own money. I do have that affiliate link down below if you're interested in exploring any of these really awesome art supplies. I just love these because they, they send me things that I would not normally buy, like for instance, these Archer and Olive uh, acrylograph pens. They're acrylic paint in uh, in pen format, and I like how narrow they are. Um, they're pretty cool. And uh, at these Copic markers, they're Copic Chows, which I don't know that much about alcohol markers. I think that these have either less ink in them or, I don't know, for some reason I think they're more of an entry-level marker, but they're still professional quality, if that makes sense. Um, Holbein, Holbein colored pencils. You have a black, a white, and a fur green in here. Let's just open these up and check them out. One thing I really do like about Sketchbox is the quality of the supplies that they send. Now I am at the professional tier for mine and I pay $30 a month. I thought it was 35, but it's only 30. So for $30, I got $48.72 worth of art supplies. And the thing about this is so cool. This is a Hannemule paper. I'm so excited about this um, the, because it's a, a manga paper that's coated on the back and it doesn't bleed through. But the thing that is so cool about all of these art supplies is that I would have walked right past them with the exception of the colored pencils probably <laughs> at the art supply store. But here it's, it's like a gift every month. This is no end. Give this a try. See what you think. I bet you can make something fun. And that's just it. This particular box is a lot of fun. Let's take a look at the art sample that they send with it just to kind of get your inspiration going. This is by Amanda Johnson. I will link to her uh, Instagram down below. It looks like she's got a YouTube channel also. I'll link to both of those things since I'm showing off her artwork here. I really love her style. And um, I'm tr going to try and do something like that, but uh, I think she's miles ahead of me on this one. So <laughs> let me get these acrylograph pens open and we'll swatch some things out. But first, take a ride with me on the struggle bus as I try to get the cellophane off of these pens. Oh my gosh, I had struggled with this. This is so edited because I swear I spent 20 minutes opening these silly pens. <laughs> that was frustrating. Um, I'm going to shake them up because they are acrylic paint pens and I assume that they need to be shaken. So I may be making a mistake here. So keep that little footnote in mind. So the back of the paper is coated so it doesn't soak through like I was mentioning, but it's very, very thin. It's like thinner than uh, typing paper or uh, printer paper. Um, it's really, really lightweight. Do they say it's 80 GSM, 40 pounds is all. So it's really, really tiny. Look at all the paint that's coming out of this brown one. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Every time I opened it, what I was drawing and playing here today, a big blob of paint came out and it did end up changing the path of the art I was trying to make. So let's just uh, speed this up a little bit and we can see how these all lay down on the paper. These are a fine point marker and I really, really like them. Um, like I said, they are acrylic and they dry with kind of a matte finish. They're water-based acrylic and they are wonderfully opaque. Uh, you can use them on any mixed media piece. Uh, you can use them in journaling, which I think is how Archer and Olive markets these. They're, they're a really cool company with paper and all kinds of things. You can check out their website if you like, um, but um, it was so nice to have these in addition to gouache because when you 
get into seeing how um, how my drawing comes out. You'll see what a fine point you can get. I kind of did some on the mushroom there and then we'll draw a little piece of asparagus for the asparagus color. And you can really see just how detailed you can get. These are really tiny drawings. This uh, sheet of paper is only four inches by six inches. It's an A6. So it's just a little sample size of this uh, manga paper pad. And I wanted to um, test this because that looked a little streaky to me. So let me pull out the Strathmore Tone Tan Paper and let's see what it looks like on here because I just kind of think we might be able to get a little bit better performance on a different paper because it feels a little slippery and it's still streaking. So, okay, I see what I have to do. You kind of have to do one-way lines like that. You have to pick up your uh, pen in between the lines to avoid streakiness. I didn't feel like I had that issue with the brown one, but then again, that brown one is flowing like crazy. So, uh, by the way, on the asparagus uh, paint pen, one pump and it was good to go. So very, very pleased about that. Um, I'm going to swatch these out. They all have a brush pen, excuse me, brush tip and a chisel tip. And these are Copic markers, so they are the gold standard. Their chow, like I said, is a little, I don't know what to call it. Like, you know, if you're going to get... Uh, <laughs> get the car. Uh, the luxury vehicle would be the Copic markers that are um, kind of oval shaped and longer and don't have the colored caps. These would be the family sedan of, uh, <laughs> of markers. I had so much fun with these. I'm not very ver well versed in marker art, but I sure like playing with it. I know that you can get blends. Look at that. Nothing bled through. This paper is so thin. I am blown away. I think that's really amazing. It's just beautiful to not have things bleed through because then you don't waste the next page. Now you cannot use the back of the page because it's obviously went through there. Um, but these greens are all so nice together. They're all very uh, kind of a, toward an earthy bent with the exception of this pencil here. This is the fur green Holbein pencil. It's almost a teal. It's got a lot of blue in it and you can really tell uh, the difference when it's up next to these other greens. But Layering on this paper, no problem. There's not a lot of tooth on this paper at all, um, but colored pencils seem to be performing just fine. So here's the fur green. And again, these are all Holbein uh, colored pencils. Excuse me. Here comes the black. Let's see. I can tell you about light fastness on these here. They're all three stars of light fastness. This is their lamp black. And then the fur green. And then we'll get to the white here in just a moment. I want to show you how uh, these blend a little bit. I'm just trying to put different uh, different pressure points on there, different, uh, different layers of different pressure. And now I want to do the white, but let's do this on black paper so that you can see uh, how it lays out. It's pretty opaque. I, I didn't put it next to my other colored, pair, colored pencil comparison ones. Um, I think I've already tested the Holbein in that colored pencil comparison series. In fact, I can put a uh, card up in the upper right hand corner if you're interested in my quest to find the perfect colored pencil. And uh, yeah, I think I've already got the Holbein one tested in there. So you'll see that video there as far as how opaque this white tends to be. One thing it's really, really good for is burnishing. And look at what a beautiful soft cast that gives to things. Uh, it goes fine over the uh, marker so that you, we can get a lot of uh, highlights and uh, definition in there. It writes over the paint just fine. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. In deciding what to draw, I, uh, of course, was really inspired by that uh, great drawing that uh, Amanda Johnson did that came with the, the kit this month. And then I got to looking up some of my favorite cartoon characters. Um, DC and Marvel are up there for me, and I was thinking of Poison Ivy. Well, I, she, you know, I really like the original Poison Ivy, um, but I couldn't find a, a picture that really just inspired me. So what I decided to do was just kind of incorporate this graphic style, just do a generic face, and kind of make her look like a teen She-Hulk. <laughs> so let's see what we can come up with. Um, you know, you can use any color to draw anything as long as your values are correct. So that's what I'm going for here. I'm trying to make this look sculpted with these uh, items in this mixed media box. And you know, when you have mixed media like this, you can really do a lot of great things that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have thought to, to have done. 
Um, for instance, right now I'm just kind of putting in the, the shade lines. I wasn't even sure which pencil pencil to use first to draw her out. So I decided to go with the, the fur because like I said, it is the most blue of all of them. And I kind of thought it might just disappear um, over some of the marker lines and it does. So that's kind of nice. I'm just kind of uh, basically putting in some ears and neck and then uh, changing your chin line a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with the lightest Copic marker. This particular one is the, um, the YG23. And the thing about alcohol markers that's so fun is you can layer them and create darker effects. So, you know, when you, when you first go in there and you're drawing and filling in uh, space, you can see a lot of streaky lines. Well, if you go over it with another layer and in a different direction too, you can really cover up those lines. Now, do not quote me on this. I am not an alcohol marker artist, <laughs> but I really do enjoy playing with them. And um, this was a lot of fun to do. I accidentally picked up the wrong marker here. I picked up the, uh, the darkest one, which is the G99. I meant to pick up the mid-range, but that's okay. We can go ahead and jump into that dark shadow later. So what I'm going to do is just use this mid-range then for her hair. And that mid-range one happens to be a, a YG67. So if you are well-versed in markers, then um, you're either laughing at me or saying, oh, that's cool. So I hope it's the latter. <laughs> I really, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not, it, I'm not well versed in any of these uh, media except for probably colored pencil. But I love mixed media and I love just playing to see what the art supplies can do. And that's why I really love Sketchbox. You guys, it's so fun. And I don't want you to feel like you're watching a Sketchbox commercial. What I want you to do with this video, what I hope you can do anyway, is to realize that you might have some supplies in your art studio that you may not have used in a while. And maybe you never thought of combining them before. One thing you may or may not have known about alcohol markers is that they can dissolve colored pencil and really soften it. And that's what I'm doing here around her eyes and to get the shadows on her face. I am continuing to sculpt in with that lightest green, the colored pencil shading that I've put on there. And now I'm going to go in and uh, shade some more in the eyes. And I'm really just having fun thinking about how I'm going to approach this. One thing I found to be horribly distracting was that white white mouth I realized that what I needed to do was get that taken care of really quickly so you can see I filled in the area around her tongue just with a light layer of the black colored pencil and now I'm going to go in and use this mushroom uh, paint pen to do the eyebrows it leaked again when I opened it I had to catch it and uh, blot it off on a paper towel this is the other really good thing about Sketchbox I will tell you this that uh, if you have any supplies that come and they're faulty all you have to do is contact them and they will fix the problem for you. So um, I may reach out to them and have me send another one. But this kind of thing is like, I don't know. It's still got ink in it. It still has plenty of paint in it, rather. And it's it works great. It's just that when you open it, it really flows. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll fix that or not. I don't know. Anyway, I just want to let you know that they're really great with our customer service. Adding the asparagus in here in her hair was so fun to get the highlights. I just, I thought she looked so cute and I really thought she looked very young. Um, gosh, she could be anywhere between the ages of 13 and 24. <laughs> and I just really had so much fun drawing her and making these shapes and curves come to life. It was so fun. I didn't realize how freeing alcohol markers could be. What I really discovered with this particular art piece is that number one, I really love alcohol markers. And number two, they're incredibly versatile. This white colored pencil, I'm trying to uh, pick up a highlight on the tip of the nose there, but it actually picked up something underneath there and just kind of made it dark. So I'm gonna let that cure for a while, let it just dry and um, go around and do some other, some other areas. And then I've decided, you know, let me burnish in the tongue and because I, I want to make that a little more of a, of a soft teal shade. We'll darken the sides of her mouth and I'm going to try and go around these eyes to get some hazel in there. And I really didn't like that. That was a big no. Um, so I'm going to go back in and darken those over again. And I wanted to keep her eyes toward the green though. So I'm using the fur colored pencil to do that. So let me get these highlights back in here. And now I decided 
You know, when this colored pencil goes down, it really picks up some neat texture, like the texture of skin actually on this paper. So it's really kind of cool. So I wanted to go over her entire face with this white colored pencil and just see what kind of textural effects I could get. It's almost like she now has on a little bit of foundation powder. <laughs> so now I'm thinking, okay, well now that underneath the chin looks a little bit foggy. So let me add some of the fur pencil over here. Whenever you are faced with an art supply that you're unfamiliar with, I think this is the best way to figure out what all it can do and how it can bring you uh, joy and delight. Just play, just have a lot of fun. You can see now when I'm going over here with the lightest marker that it does break up that colored pencil a little bit and it just makes it nice and smooth. So I really like the effect that this gave to uh, her face overall. I really had a great time learning about these supplies as I was using them. As I'm continuing to work on her face and getting close to finishing her, this white in the background is just so distracting to me. So I wanted to just go around it with this lightest marker and then I really didn't like that at all. So I thought I would open this pen again and look, it it's leaking again. You know, maybe I will say something. I don't know. I, I probably will exchange it. Okay, so I need to uh, clean up my table now and um, look at that. It's ran and it just got a big blob where I didn't want it. I was just going to put uh, some outline around this and yeah, I can't clean it up because it's acrylic. I, I can't get rid of that, but... We'll try, we'll just go around this and outline it a little bit. And then um, you'll see at the end what I did because I realized that there is a lot of purple in this brown. It's a very nice brown to go with these greens. If you've never heard of a term called complementary colors, purple and green are. They are kind of opposite each other on the, color, on the color wheels, so that's why they look so good together. They make a wonderful contrast. And this brown has just enough purple tones in it that it really is making this green pop. And I thought, well, she's got a dot on her forehead. I might as well give her freckles. So <laughs> let's go ahead and give her some freckles. And then uh, we'll see what I'm going to do with that blob up there on her hair. Oh, you guys, I was disappointed in that. But never fear, let's turn it into a happy little opportunity. And I'm just going to fill in the background with this paint pen. I really love working with these pens. I think that I just got kind of a, a dud here, I, but the pen themselves, I love the nib. They're so firm and easy to get a very fine line. You could really do some wonderful journaling um, with these, which is what they're designed for. And by that, I mean they're, they're small enough that you can write with very comfortably. That's how um, I demonstrated that in the beginning with uh, when we swatched these out. So. I really like these pens. I have another one that uh, that they sent us in another uh, sketch box, and I really have considered buying more. So this is something that is another cool thing about these is that you get introduced to supplies that maybe you want to really focus on. So let me just touch up just a little bit. I can never leave well enough alone. I'm just going to add a few more shadows, and it just look at that. Just one little swipe of the pencil over there and, and it just changes the lighting on her face so drastically. I am in love with colored pencil over alcohol marker, you guys. I, I really have never spent time doing it. And then this right here where I had the colored pencil under her hairline, I was able to create that shadow that's deep in the hair. So I really like that. That was just really effortless. I didn't know that that was uh, possible. I, I just felt like this was one of the most eye-opening art experiences that I have had. Um, I'm going to work on the lips here a little bit, but she's just about done. Let's go ahead and skip to the end. Well, my friends, I think she's a keeper. I think that all of you should spend some time this week, if you have time, and work on some monochromatic art pieces. I think that you'll really be happy that you did. Drawing something or painting something using only one color and then different layers of it can really expand your repertoire as an artist. You focus on shadows, form, and structure, and texture, things like that that are uh, really just done with nuancing. But when you're dealing with only one color, it kind of takes all those variables out. And especially if you're doing uh, whatever art piece you're working on in a color that normally would never happen, then that is really a way to go. You can see here that it did not seep through to the second page at all, definitely to the back of the page, but not through to the second page. And on the front side of this paper, despite it being so thin, you didn't have any warping or buckling or anything like that. It's just very easy to use. So I can wholeheartedly recommend every single supply in this month's sketchbox. That's the March 2024 edition.
Okay, guys, check out that affiliate link in the description. And everybody, have a wonderfully creative week. We'll see you next time. Bye now.